Hello, everyone. So let's talk about the brand new Voltron series. Only on Netflix. I think it was only on Netflix. Well, anyways, lucky for me, my source actually has it so I could actually watch it. Yay. First two episodes. Well, actually, if we actually if we actually classify those. Technically, we have the first four episodes because you had the first episode that was one hour plus long. Then the other one was 23 minutes. Technically, you can actually say if you slice those up into 20s, you actually have four episodes in all. Whatever. Anyways, the first episode was very, very good. That was awesome. I enjoyed it. The funny part is that the last time I actually was watching Voltron. It actually came on on Sunday, Sunday at 930 to be exact. And this one actually took the route just like what happened with Transformers. It's like Transformers was all cartoon related, but then they decided to go 3D with Beast Wars. And that's what sold me on it. Voltron, I remember when I was very little, when it was part of Toonami with Yeah, that. So, or maybe it was a pre, that was pre Toonami. That was Toonami before it became Toonami. But anyways, yeah, I didn't really give a crap about Voltron. I think it's because I got spoiled, technically. If it's something from the 80s, you're going to have to revamp it and make it nicer. Basically, if you want to make it good, you're going to have to up it up to 3D. And that's what they did in the 2000s. They gave us a new Voltron series and... It was cool, especially the fact of you had Voltron having two modes. You had the normal mode, and then when they went to deep space, they had a different mode, which was cool. That was awesome. Now, the funny part is that because I watched that series, I was able to tell who was what. I was able to tell that the one that was we get introduced to, don't know their names. At least the good news is that that won't spoil it for you. But anyways, yeah, so we got the blue line, which I'm like... Yeah, I knew the freaking cocky flight guy is the blue lion. And then I was like, hmm, the green one was the brainy one. So, yeah, the one with the glasses. (laughs) And then we had the yellow lion, the yellow lion pilot, which they technically call it paladin. So that's the fun part. It's like, yeah, I remember the yellow guy actually was always about food, food, food. And I'm like, yep, that fat guy fits the description. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then he got the red one showing up. He was wearing red. And then you have the the one that everyone looks up to, Shiro. I know his name. Technically, Shiro is the Japanese name for white, for those who actually want food for thought. I think so. Yeah, I think white is Shiro. But anyways, so they rescue him. Wait a minute. No, it should be black. I don't know. Frick. All right. If it's black, yay. If it's white, yay, because I got it right. Anyways, so what they did was that they actually made it so that the black ha- black paladin, my gosh, the black lion paladin, that's what they call him. So they made it so that, oh, that's background, my gosh. Well, anyways, they made it so that they actually have him have a tragic story because they actually built up to what happens with the bad guy. So, yeah, he has a brand new power and he has a freaking robotic arm by some chances. And if I remember what they said in the second episode, no, the first episode, they were like, he is the champion. So I would figure that technically they actually made them fight in a ring. And that's what happened to him is that his arm got damaged or take it off. So they gave him a robotic arm and then there you go. Now you can fight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's gonna be interesting and the green lion paladin he's looking for his brother and his father who actually were with shiro when it came to that adventure that they were going on they actually were looking at one of Nep- not neptune's pluto's moons taking a sample and then all of a sudden they get attacked sorry for the spoiler so yeah that all happened it was like holy freak so that's the awesomeness of it 
they had to look for all the lions, which thank goodness they didn't actually decide to do it in Dragon Ball Z faction. All right, we found a green line. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Come on, dude. We didn't even find the other two lines. <laughs> and they're like, the yellow line. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> the red line. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. You see the, them actually four Voltron. It's like, oh, come on, man. They didn't do that. They actually decided to put it all together, and they did it, which I'm like, thank goodness. We also got the princess and the guy that is technically the technician or mechanic. I think he said another word that rhymes with mechanic or sounds like mechanic, but yeah, he got that guy and they've been actually in the thing for 10,000 years. Yeah. So astro production or cryogenetics, Genesis, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, they were in that for 10,000 years and it's like, holy frick. Yeah. A war happened and the princess was right. Yeah. They should have fought with Voltron. Instead, the father was like, no, we're going to, Put Voltron, we're going to separate the lions and hide them somewhere. I think that's the best option because they're after him. And then, yeah, he's dead now. <laughs> it's like he's dead and then he has the freaking every memory and thought of himself, his consciousness in the freaking computer. And when she actually goes face to face with him to find out what to do, he was like, yes, you're right. We should actually have fought. You were right for the get go and you should do it now. Fight. So that's what happened, and now they have the crazy part of trying to figure out how to create Voltron. But, of course, one thing you need to know is that they got suits of their own, and luckily for the fat and when the yellow paladin, <laughs> the, the suit actually shrinks or expands to commendate. For the green one, technically, a suit actually had to shrink some for him to fit. They also get to have some weapons. So you have the red one who gets to have a sword. The blue one and the yellow one gets to have blasters. The green one gets to have a taser, I think. The black one, the weird the weird part, I was like, okay. So, and they're like, yeah, we lost that one. That one actually died with the black lion paladin, the original one before you. So we don't know where it is. And well, good luck with that. But luckily for them, luckily fourth wall breaker here, they decided to write in the fact that he has a, uh, Nice little power up move with his robotic arm. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> they fixed. But we would, I would kind of wonder what was the weapon that he had? Was it a bigger sword? A sword that he has to wield with two arm, two hands? I don't know. So, yeah, he got that. And then he finally turned to Voltron. And it was awesome. I mean, Voltron has been changed from what they previously did in the previous adaptations. But yeah, Voltron has changed. They made it their own, and it was good. It was awesome to just see how it goes. The fact that it kind of reminds me of Tony Stark in a way. The fact that instead of the lions actually have to grip, you know, like as if arms, they decided to do like, yeah, you know what? Blasters. They're now blasters. They're able to blast stuff from their mouths. And that's what the blue one demonstrated along with, what happened in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, of course, where the saber-toothed tiger is able to shoot beams out of his tail, too. So it is able to shoot beams out of his tail <laughs> as well. And it's kind of cool how the red one worked because you had a queen, well, Princess Queen gave a rundown of what the lion's attributes and stuff like that. And it's kind of funny. The blue one is very, very funny. The blue one has to be like the Mike or the Brock or the one that loves girls, you know, the ladies man of the group. So, yeah, he got all that and they basically beat him. But the red line was awesome because it was like you have to prove that you're worthy for him. And frick, man. He's <laughs> like, frick, yeah, you frick. But yeah, he did it, and then they'd be able to turn into a Voltron. And then after that, the next episode, which the next episode, episode two is a downer, or technically episode four. But, anyways, it's kind of a downer. It's like, I see what you're going with. That was awesome, but the way they ended it was bullcrap. I kind of, instead of you actually being like, oh, well, we got to get them ready to fight this monster we have, the monster who actually got defeated by Voltron before, but we're going to do it in Dragon Ball Z style. Next time with Dragon Ball Z, we go against them. They get to go against a monster. It's like, oh, come on. Just let them go against it now. Go against it now. Allow them to have a victory. That will be good until the next ones come out. But instead, you want us to wait now? We have to wait? 
That's one thing I didn't like about Dragon Ball Z. It's like you have to wait until the next episode. Then you have to wait again on the next episode. It's like it comes to the point of where it's like, yeah, it's good and all, but if you actually allow us to, you finish it, and then you start the next one next time, I'm okay with it. Like, for instance, the whole, they defeated Vegeta. G- G- Vegeta runs away, or, he, yeah, he gets sent somewhere. You know where he goes. And then it's like, oh, go to Planet Namek next. It's like, that's a good center part. I'm okay with it. But I kind of actually would have preferred they just stay with the f- first episode. And they would stay with the first episode, had a good victory and stuff like that. I'm fine with it. But the second episode, I'm like, oh. The second episode should have came with the third episode. That's how I feel. But Voltron, Voltron, that one's a good one. It's good. It's awesome. They have stories. They develop the characters. We know a bit about the characters. We have the blue one who, well, the blue one's the blue one. Blue paladin is a blue paladin. Green paladin. He's worried about his girlfriend. He's also worried about his family. The black one wants the black paladin. Oh, frig it. I don't care, man. But anyways, the black paladin, he decided to actually, he wants to know what happened during his time when he got knocked the frick out to where he actually crash landed. Yeah, he wants to fill in the blocks. Yeah, and the sad part is that they saved a bunch of aliens, and alien knows his name, but sadly they can't actually ask because the safety pod. So, yeah, more questions for him. The red one, he doesn't have anything, so there we go. But, of course, I kind of would figure out of the ones who's going to maybe, if they do a storyline of the lions reject, I would figure the red lion actually be the one who's, like, rejecting crap. And he's like, oh, frig, I got to <laughs> demonstrate my loyalty or I'm worthy again? Frig. <laughs> uh, but... Good story. Can't wait to see how this goes. It's not like the other ones where it's like, oh, it's so old, man. It's so old. No, this one is brand spanking new. They added some stuff. It's very fun, especially the fact of the yellow paladin. He's, you know, he's chubby. He's freaking damn chubby. He's so chubby that the the way to go to the lion is go to the freaking cockpit of the lion. He tried doing the zip line, I guess that's what we're going to call it. And sadly, the zip line went very, very slow for him until the point of where he fell off. And then the zip line decided to say, okay, I'll free them. And then he had to slide, kind of slide down there. And then after that, his vehicle that goes into the cockpit left without him. And it's like, oh, frick. So he gets screwed over. But luckily, the good news is that they kind of fixed it for him, which I'm like, if you're going to make this a runaway gag again, another gag, I'm going to be like, oh, come on, guys. But they allowed it to happen once. That was funny. But then, of course, that's clever, smart. It would be stupid if they continue on being like, oh, he'll be able to do it. No, they were able to actually slow it down and make sure that he's able to get into the cockpit safely. Yeah, they modified it so now it's able to help hold his weight and it goes faster than, yeah, so there we go. That's good. Anyways, watch it. Don't watch it. I say watch it if you can. I mean, I wish you would come to the point of where it's like Saturday mornings is not the way it used to be anymore. It's not. It sucks. It's like, yeah, this Voltron TV show, what they're doing at Disney XD's, all the other ones at Hulu and everything. It's like you guys could actually come together, be like, hey, we're going to make some serious money. And freaking find a freaking station where you're like, okay, let's go right in this and entertain children, which that's what we're supposed to be doing on Saturday mornings is they were entertained from Monday through Friday. Well, not entertained. They were educated, freaking beat the crap, beat all that information into their brains on Saturday. Do you think they need more educational crap? No, they need a break. They need something to relax and get away from it. That's what Saturday morning's supposed to be. Not what you guys are doing today. More information, edutainment. Yeah, no, no. You need some edutain educate. No, oh my gosh. You need some freaking ed- entertainment. My gosh. But anyways, thank you for watching. 
watch it, don't watch it. I say definitely watch it, but it was going to cost you. Don't waste it, man. You could just find loopholes. I found a loophole. Most likely you will find a loophole. Of course, if you were like, please tell me where you found it. Please help me. Private message me and I'll tell you. But other than that, good luck. Thank you for watching.